Hello my bookworms, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney. Today we are chatting about all of the fall releases that I am most excited about. So hey, what's up? How are you? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. I don't think I can adequately put into words how absolutely incredible it was to taste pumpkin today. And there's no better way to celebrate than talking about all of the fall releases that are coming out this year that I am so excited about. And I can't wait to chat about them with you. So let's dive right on, right on. <laughs> Dive right on into it. Man, there's just nothing better. I've missed this so much. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start with September. This video will cover September, October, and November. Those are the months that I consider fall. You can disagree with me, but that is what I'm doing. <laughs> if you see me looking over here to the left, maybe it's your right, I don't know. I have my laptop here sitting on a chair because we're really high tech here. And I might be referencing all of the books that I have in tabs to chat about with you. So in September, this first one is like, I don't I'm like un- Uncannily. Uncannily? So excited about this one for really no good reason other than it's so nostalgic. <laughs> this book comes out on September 5th and it is Enchanted to Meet You by Meg Cabot. When I first saw this book on the September releases list that I was looking at, <laughs> I was literally like, why does that name sound so familiar? Why does that font look so familiar? And then I specifically saw The Mediator and about lost my mind. I ate those up when I was a kid. I ate them up <laughs> and I cannot wait to eat this book up. This is a witchy adult paranormal romance where our main character is Jessica. And when she was a teenager, she tried to cast a spell that went disastrously wrong. So then she was banned from this world council of witches. Yes, but 15 years later, someone from this World Council of Witches shows up on her doorstep. His name is Derek, and he basically tells her that she is the chosen one. Not chosen to be a part of the council, but basically to save her entire town. And as summer ends, her powers start to grow. She's beginning to think that she and Derek also might have a certain magic of their own. She learns that Derek might not be who she thought he was, and suddenly she finds herself having to make another kind of choice. Trust Derek and work with him to combat the sinister force battling to bring down West Harbor, or use her gift as she always has to keep herself and her heart safe. It just sounds like a cozy little Hallmark movie. <laughs> just the fact that this is the same author that wrote those books just makes it feel cozy to me. And I'm like really excited to experience her writing in like a new era of my life. The next one that comes out on September 19th is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. This cover is beautiful. The synopsis of this one says, Effie has always believed in fairy tales. Haunted by visions of the fairy king since childhood, she's had no choice. Her tattered copy of Angrad, Angrad? in Garahad. <laughs> A book, which is an epic about a mortal girl who falls in love with the fairy king, then destroys him, is the only thing keeping her afloat. So when Mirden's family, the author of that book, announces a contest to redesign the late author's estate, Effie feels certain that it's her destiny. But musty, decrepit, hair I th These words are so hard to pronounce. <laughs> hard. The manor is dusty and decrepit, <laughs> and it seems an impossible task. Its residents are far from welcoming, including Preston, a stodgy young literature scholar determined to expose Mirrodin as a fraud. As the two rivals piece together clues about Mirrodin's legacy, dark forces, both mortal and magical, conspire against them, the truth might bring them both to ruin. Now for me, books that are described as fairy tale esque are sometimes hit or miss. Sometimes it's almost a little bit too fluffy because I feel like I'm a more intense reader. I really like high stakes and, you know, drama. But this cover has been calling to me since I first saw it a while ago. And of course, anything described as gothic, I'm going to want to read it. So this one I have hesitantly high hopes for. I'm really looking forward to it. The next one, you know it, you love it. I'm so excited about it. It is The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. I'm about 200 pages into this book. I have the physical arc somewhere on my coffee table behind me and I am eating it up. I am loving every single page of this book. V.E. Schwab just keeps getting better and better. I'm telling you to put this on your radar if you haven't already. It is a new series set in the darker shade of magic worlds where there are four Londons and only certain magicians can bounce in between these Londons and we are following some of the old characters from the darker shade of magic trilogy while being introduced to new characters entirely. And it has been an absolute joy. So far in this book, the callbacks to the previous trilogy are so perfectly placed, explained just enough to where you don't have to read the darker shade of magic series before you jump into this one because it kind of does explain things a little bit, but 
but if you can, of course, me being the publication purist that I am, would recommend reading the Darker Shade trilogy before this one, but I do not think that you have to. It's just fun to see the little crossovers, in my humble opinion. This one comes out on September 26th. The next book is Rouge by Mona Awad. Y'all know she's one of my favorite authors. I'm so stinking excited for this one. This is a horror-tinted gothic fairy tale about a lonely dress shop clerk whose mother's unexpected death sends her down a treacherous path in pursuit of youth and beauty. In this story, we're following our main character, Belle, who has been insidiously obsessed with her skin and skincare videos online. And when her estranged mother dies, she has to move back home to Southern California, I think, and must deal with her mother's considerable debts while grappling with lingering questions surrounding the situation. The stakes escalate when a strange woman in red appears at the funeral, offering a tantalizing clue about her mother's demise, followed by a cryptic video about a transformative spa experience. With the help of a pair of red shoes, Belle is lured into a barbed embrace of La Maison de Meduse, the same lavish culty spa to which her mother was devoted. There, Belle discovers the frightening secret behind her and her mother's obsession with the mirror and the great shimmering depths and demons that lurk on the other side of the glass. I just, I just, I... <laughs> I just eat up Mona Awad's stories. At some point in her stories, it always kind of feels like a little bit of a fever dream and it always gets a little bit weird and a little bit unhinged. And I just am obsessed with it. I love it so much. Everything I've read from her has been four or five stars. So I can't wait to see what she's doing next. Okay, this next one is kind of a dark horse for me. Thieves Gambit by Kavion Lewis. It comes out on September 26th. This one has a lot of elements within the story that I just adore. Rosalind was raised by a legendary family of thieves with one rule, trust no one. Trapped in a glamorous world of riches and double crosses, she's about to escape the family business when her parents are kidnapped. Her only chance to save them is to win the Thieves' Gambit, a deadly competition for the world's up and coming thieves where the victor is granted one wish. To win, she must outwit all of her backstabbing competitors, including her arch nemesis. But can she take the victory from a handsome, charming boy who makes a play for her heart? The one who might be hiding the most dangerous secret of all. It is described as a cinematic heist thriller. And with that competition element as well, I just don't know how I couldn't at least have a good time reading it. I'm excited for it. Okay, this next one, I don't know if anyone knows about it. <laughs> It only has like 97 ratings on Goodreads. It is called Champion of Fate by Kendare Blake. It comes out on September 19th. So this synopsis says, behind every great hero is an Aristine. Aristine are mythical female warriors, part of a legendary order. Though heroes might be immortalized in stories, it's the Aristine who guide them to victory. They are the hero makers. Ever since she was an orphan taken in by the order, Reed has wanted to be an Aristine. Now as an initiate, just one challenge stands in her way. She must shepherd her first hero to glory on the battlefield. Succeed and Reed will take her place beside her sisters. Fail and she'll be cast from the only home she's ever known. Nothing is going to stop her until she meets her hero. Hestion is fiery and infuriating, but what begins as an alliance becomes more and as secrets of the order come to light, Reed begins to understand what becoming an Aristine may truly cost. Battle looming, she must choose the order and the life she had planned or Hestion and the one she never expected. I think it sounds so good. It is a young adult family fantasy with a little subplot of romance. And I just, it sounds awesome. It sounds like I could really be into this story. It is a start of a series. So keep that in mind. It is the hero maker is the name of that series. And it begins on September 19th. <laughs> this next one will come out on September 26th. And it is The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin. It's about a social media influencer with a secret past who buys a murder house to renovate, but finds more than she bargained for behind the peeling wallpaper. She has a failing marriage and she's hoping that this fixer upper will help reach a new audience on her successful lifestyle blog. But as she is painting over the house's horrifying past, she knows better than anyone that a new facade can't conceal every secret. Then the builders start acting erratically and experiencing bizarre accidents. Sarah knows there's only so long she can continue to sleep in the bedroom with the blood-stained floor and suffer the mysterious footsteps she hears from the attic. When menacing notes start appearing everywhere, Sarah becomes convinced that someone or something is out to kill her, her husband, her neighbors, maybe even the house itself. The more she remodels Blackwood House, the angry angrier it seems to become. With every passing moment, Sarah's life spirals further out of control and with it, her sense of reality. Though she desperately clings to the lies she crafted to conceal her own secrets, Sarah must wonder, was it all worth it? Or will this house be her final unraveling? I really love the idea of having the haunted house becoming more and more haunted the more that you're trying to like fix it up. That idea is what really grasps me for this one. Plus I love a haunted house story. I really, really do. So this one sounds potentially right up my alley. The next one, I have yet to read from this author, but 
I am just unhealthily obsessed with all of the covers that she puts out. It is Penance by Eliza Clark. On a beach in a rundown seaside town on the Yorkshire coastline, 16 year old Joan Wilson is set on fire by three other schoolgirls. Damn. <laughs> Nearly a decade after the horrifying murder, journalist Alec Z. Corelli has written the definitive account of the crime drawn from hours of interviews and witnesses and family members, painstaking historical research, and most notably correspondence with the killers themselves. The result is a riveting snapshot of lives rocked by tragedy in a town left in turmoil. But how much of the story is actually true? <gasps> Shocking. I don't know, but I want to find out. This book comes out on September 26th. Next we have The Hexologist by Johaya Bancroft. This is basically about a group of people called The Hexologists who go around helping desperate clients with magical mysteries. They've recovered children abducted from chimney wraiths, removed infestations of barb-nosed incubi, and ventured into the gray plains of the unmade to soothe a troubled ghost. Well acquainted with the weird, they never shy away from a challenging case. They soon find themselves embroiled within a royal secret mystery that could very well see the nation turned on its head. Their effort to expose a royal secret buried under 40 years of lies brings them nose to nose with a violent anti-royalist gang of voracious ghouls, alchemists who draw their power from hell-like dimensions and a bookish dragon who occasionally eats people. I love him already. This one sounds so interesting. I want to read it mostly for the dragon. I'm not going to lie. But I think following a group of people who like work with hexes and solve magical mysteries could be right up my alley. It sounds really fun. It comes out on September 26th. All right, listen, this next one is a young adult horror. It is What Stalks Among Us by Sarah Hollowell. It sounds so like delightfully creepy. <laughs> Best friends and high school seniors Sadie and Logan make their first mistake when they ditch their end of the year field trip to the amusement park in favor of exploring some old forgotten back roads. The last thing they expect is to come across a giant abandoned cord maze, but with a whole day of playing hooky unspooling before them, they make their second mistake or perhaps their third, maybe even their fourth. <laughs> because Sadie and Logan have definitely entered this maze before and again before that. <laughs> when they stumble on the corpses in the maze, identical to them in every way, if you can ignore the stab and gunshot wounds, from their clothes to their hidden scars and to their dyed hair, to that one missing tooth, they quickly realize they've not only entered this maze before, they've died in it too a lot. And no matter what they try, they can't figure out what or who is haunting them. Deeply unnerving, clever, and atmospheric, this time-bending, mind-bending, speculative horror is a poignant meditation on the lasting effects of trauma and the healing powers of connection and forgiveness, all while delivering more surprise twists and turns than a haunted corn maze. I think that sounds phenomenal. <laughs> This is another one. It literally only has 46 ratings, but again, why do, why do I say it's not, they're not even out yet. Sydney. <laughs> That's what this video is, is to be on the lookout for these. So, hey, I don't know, maybe watch out for this one. It sounds really cool. That one comes out on September 12th. And the next one is September 5th, and it is There's No Way I'd Die First by Lisa Springer. This one sounds creepy too. <laughs> it says, Noelle knows horror. Every trope, every warning sign, every survival tactic. She even leads a successful movie club dedicated to the genre. Thus, who knows better to throw the ultimate, most exclusive Halloween party in all of Long Island. And with the guest list, including the coolest kids in her senior class, her popularity is bound to spike. Hopefully enough to warrant an expansion into podcasting. Nothing is going to kill the party's vibes, except maybe the low budget it clown she hires to lead a classic round of tag. He's supposed to be terrifying, though in a comforting, nostalgic way. Instead, the guy is giving major creeps, but maybe Noelle's just that good at hosting? Her confidence is immediately rocked when the night's entertainment axes one of her guests and he's not done yet. If an evil murderous clown thinks life is a game, then Noelle is ready to play. She's been waiting a long time to prove that she's a final girl. <laughs> Can you just imagine being at a party and like playing tag with a creepy clown and it legitimately kills someone? Like, could you? <laughs> Sounds like it could be a wild ride for sure. The last one that is coming out in September that I wanted to chat about is Fall of Ruin and Wrath by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Mostly because of the cover. I, it's a really cool cover. I've tried to read the synopsis a couple times and I don't know if I really understand it. <laughs> But listen, the two crows and the sword, I mean, like, I couldn't just not put it on the list. It says, Long ago, the world was destroyed by gods. Only nine cities were spared. Separated by vast wilderness, teeming with monsters and unimaginable dangers, each city is now ruled by a guardian. Royalty who feed on mortal pleasure. Born with an intuition that never fails, Kalista knows her talents are of great value to the power hungry of the world. So she lives hidden as a courtesan of the Baron of Archwood. In exchange for his protection, she grants him information. When her intuition leads her to save a traveling prince in dire trouble, the voice inside her blazes with warning and promise. 
today he'll bring her joy, one day he'll be her doom. When the Baron takes an interest in the traveling prince and the prince takes an interest in Kalista, she becomes the prince's temporary companion. But the city simmers with rebellion and with knights and monsters at her city gates and a hungry prince in her bed, intuition may not be enough to keep her safe. Kalista must choose, follow her intuition to safety or follow her heart to her downfall. Okay, it makes more sense now. Maybe I just had to read it out loud. <laughs> JLA is known for her fantasy romance and apparently this one has a lot of suspense within the storyline as well. JLA and I have a love and hate relationship, but I might give this one a shot. It comes out on September 12th. All right, let's move into October, shall we? This first one has a really beautiful cover. It is The Witches at the End of the World by Chelsea Iverson. It says, rage birds brighter than any spell fire. Deep in the birch woods of Norway, magic courses through the veins of two sisters. For years they've been alone, but sweet tempered Kaja is tired of living in the shadows and longs for a life filled with community, even if it means stifling her magic. But Minna is a witch through and through with wrath always simmering below the surface. Different as they may be, both will never forget the day they were driven from their village, the day their mother burned. When Kaja leaves to pursue a new life, Minna is left alone in the darkness of the forest. Devastated and outraged at the betrayal, Minna casts a curse to punish those who took everything from her. What she doesn't realize is that this act will incite a deadly chain of events. Soon it will destroy everything, including the life Kaja has lovingly built. But once a witch's rage boils, regret means nothing. She can't take back what is already done. Someone will have to burn. Sounds like it could be really good. And this cover, those rabbits, the flowers, it's giving Once in Future Witches. The Goodreads reviews are not that great that I'm looking at it, but maybe I'll love it. <laughs> That one comes out on October 17th, so who knows? The next one is All That Consumes Us by Erica Waters. This is a young adult horror fantasy with gothic elements and queer representation. So let's see. Our main character is Tara, who is offered a chance at Corbin's College Elite's Academic Society. Once she's settled into the gorgeous Victorian dormitory the Academy calls home, something strange starts to happen. She finally has the chance to write, but her stories are dark and twisted. When she's not sleepwalking, she's dreaming about being trapped in a coffin, buried alive, and she's starting to feel an unseen presence stalking her through the halls. As Tara slowly loses her grip on everything she's ever known, she discovers a terrible secret at the heart of Magni Veri, which is the Academy, one that might destroy her before she even has a chance to escape. It says it's going to blur the lines of reality and show the addictive nature of ambition with hypnotizing an utterly lush gothic reverie. Kinda is giving Catherine House a little bit, and I love that book a lot, so maybe this could be a little encore to it. This one comes out on October 17th. This cover is wild. It says, When Ghosts Call Us Home by Katya D. Bacara. It says, When Sophia was 12, she starred in her older sister Lila's amateur horror movie Vermilion, which recorded raw footage of her very real reactions to scenes her sister concocted in their old Californian house on the coast. They called it Cashore House. In the years after the film's release, Sophia's relationship with her sister became more strained while her memories of the now infamous house fueled her nightmares. Vermilion amassed an army of fanatical fans who speculated about the film's hidden messages, and it was rumored that Layla made a pact with the devil, her soul in exchange for fame and arcane knowledge. Sophia dismissed the gossip until Layla disappeared. Now, Sophia must study the trail of clues Layla left behind, returning to the very place where it all began. As she gets closer and closer to Kashur's house haunted heart, she must once again confront the ghosts of her childhood, but the house won't reveal its secrets without a fight. Like, look at this cover, that hand that's like scratching the back of that child's neck. <laughs> yeah, with a setting of like a coastal mansion, I really do think think that this is something I could really enjoy, especially because I used to make little home movies like this with my friends when I was a kid. And we did actually try to make like a really creepy one once. <laughs> that cursed footage is lost forever. Don't, don't you worry. <laughs> Or is it? So maybe I could really enjoy this one. It sounds super fun. <laughs> this next one comes out on October 3rd and it is Curious Tides by Pascal Lasselle. This is a start of a new series by called Drowned Gods. It's pitched as Ninth House meets Deadly Education. Loved Ninth House, DNF'd Deadly Education, but this cover's really beautiful. And it says, Emery might be a student at the prestigious Aldrin College for Lunar Magics, but her healing abilities have always been mediocre at best until a treacherous night in the Dovermore Sea Caves leaves a group of her class Mates dead, and her as the only survivor. Now Emery is plagued by strange and possible powers that no healer should possess. Powers that would ruin her life if the wrong person were to discover them. To gain control over these new abilities, she enlists the help of the school's most reclusive student, Baz, a boy who is well-versed in the deadly nature of darker magic, and whose sister happened to be one of the drowned students and Emery's best friend. Determined to find the truth behind the drownings and the cult-like secret society she's convinced her classmates were involved in, Emery is faced with even more questions when the supposedly drowned students started washing ashore. Alive. What? <laughs> Only for each of them immediately to die horrible magical deaths. Oh, 
Never mind, it's sad again. <laughs> and Emery is not the only one seeking answers. When her new magic captures the society's attention, she finds herself drawn into their world of privilege and power, all while wondering if the truth she's searching for might lead her right back to Devermere to face the fate she was never meant to escape. That sounds really awesome. I really enjoy when water is involved in stories. Like the power of water and oceans is just something that I really love to explore in stories. So it sounds like I could really, really enjoy it. And maybe you will too. The next one is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. It comes out on October 31st, Halloween. No, I think they actually changed it. I think they upped it to October 3rd, actually. I was lucky enough to get an arc of this book, so I have already read it and reviewed it, and it is pitched as a contemporary gothic fairy tale about a small town haunted by the history it can't quite seem to bury, and the canny, clever young woman who finds herself drawn to the house that sits at the crossroads of it all. And the house is called Starling House, and the main character inside that place is Arthur. He is the current warden of the house, and there's a long lineage of people who have taken care of it before him. People kind of leave leave this house alone. It's very odd. Weird things happen around it. And our other main character is, what's her name? Opal. By certain situations, she ends up working at Starling House and learns about all of the monstrous creatures and the gothic situations that are going on that are living on and because of the property and the wonders that lay beneath it. If Opal wants a home, she'll have to fight for it and dig up her family's dark past and go down, down into the underland and claw her way back to the light. This is a really solid story that definitely leans more into the sort of like eerie fairy tale vibes. I was expecting a little bit more of a like a spooky horror time. And if you go into it knowing that it's actually not scary, I think you'll have a great time. I think I was expecting a little bit more like horror because horror was listed second in the genres, but really it's like a cozy gothic fairy tale with some spooky elements. You know what I'm saying? Don't expect to be scared, but the story itself was really great. Okay. Okay. I actually didn't know that I had this one in a tab and I'm so stinking excited. This next one is coming out on October. October 17th, and it is The Unmaking of June Pharaoh by Adrian Young. And if you know, Spells for Forgetting is by this author, and it was in my top 10 books of the year last year. So wow, I'm really excited. I can't wait to read more from this author. This one says, in the small mountain town of Jasper, North Carolina, June Pharaoh is waiting for her fate to find her. The Pharaoh women are known for their thriving flower farm and the mysterious curse that has plagued their family line. The whole town remembers the madness that led to Susanna Pharaoh's disappearance, leaving June to be raised by her grandmother and haunted by rumors. It's been a year since June started seeing and hearing things that weren't there. Faint wind chimes, a voice calling her name, and a mysterious door appearing out of nowhere. The signs of what June always knew was coming, but June is determined to end the curse once and for all, even if she must sacrifice finding love and having a family of her own. After her grandmother's death, June discovers a series of cryptic clues regarding her mother's decades-old disappearance, except they only lead to more questions. But could the door she once assumed was a hallucination be the answer she's been searching for? The next time it appears, June realizes she can touch it and walk past the threshold. When she does, she embarks on a journey that will not only change both the past and the future, but also uncover the lingering mysteries of her small town and entangle her heart in an epic star-crossed love. If this book is anything like Spells for Forgetting, I'm in the way that it's written with the fantasy and magical realism being so great with an underlying like mystery thriller aspect, which it actually in all the genres that looks like all of those things are actually there. So I'm super excited. This is one that is high up on my radar personally. And it'll be out on October 17th. Also in October, the 10th to be exact, Cassandra Clare's next book is coming out and it is not a Shadowhunters book. It is completely new. It is a new series called Sword Catcher. We have a couple main characters, Kel, who is an orphan, stolen from the life he knew to become the Sword Catcher, the body double of a royal heir, Prince Connor Aurelian, or Elaine. He has been raised alongside the prince, trained in every aspect of combat and statecraft. He and Connor are close as brothers, but Kel knows he has one identity, to die for Connor. No other future is possible. Our other main character is Lynn Castor, and he's one of the Ashkar, a small community who still possesses magical abilities. By law, they must live behind walls in the city, but Lynn, a physician, ventures out to tend to the sick and dying of Castellane. That's the place. That's the world. After a failed assassination attempt brings Lynn and Kel together, they are drawn into the web of the mysterious rag picker king, <laughs> the criminal ruler of Castellane's underworld. He offers them each what they want most, but as they descend into the world of intrigue and shadow, they discover a conspiracy of corruption that reaches from the darkest gutters of Castellane to the highest tower of its palaces. As long-kept secrets begin to unravel, they must ask themselves, is knowledge worth the price of betrayal? Can forbidden love bring down a kingdom? And will Lynn and Kel's discoveries plunge their nation into war and the world into chaos? I'm excited to see what Cassandra Clare does with a book that isn't Shadowhunters. I'm excited to see her venturing out into a new world because I know that her Shadowhunters books are kind of like a little cozy fantasy for me, and I'm looking forward to experiencing something new from her as well. This next one will come out on October 10th, 
10th, and it is Last to Leave the Room by Caitlin Starling. It is a genre-busting speculative horror, and in it, the city of San Sirocco, maybe, is sinking. The basement of Dr. Tasman Rivers, the arrogant, selfish head of the research team assigned to find the source of the sinking. It's sinking faster. <laughs> as Tasman grows obsessed with the distorting dimensions of the room as it starts to cave, at the bottom of the stairs, she finds a door that didn't exist before. And one night, it opens to reveal an exact physical copy of her. This doppelganger is sweet and biddable where Tasman is calculating and cruel. It appears fully terribly human, passing every test Tasman can devise. But the longer the double exists, the more Tasman begins to forget pieces of her life to lose track of time, to grow terrified of the outside world. And as her employer grows increasingly suspicious, Tasman must try to hold herself together long enough to figure out what her double wants from her and just where the mysterious door leads. That sounds really interesting. This author wrote The Death of Jane Lawrence and The Luminous Dead, both books that I have on my physical TBR that I really want to read. And now I'm adding this one to the list because the fact that a room is like literally having its dimensions distorted and then a door appears with a doppelganger on the other side, like there are so many wild things happening in this synopsis and I really want to experience it. The next one is The Scarlet Alchemist by Kylie Lee Baker. This is the author that wrote The Keeper of Night and I really enjoyed it. So I'm really excited to see another series started by her. Our main character is Zalan who dreams of becoming a royal alchemist, of providing for her family by making alchemical gold and gems for the wealthy to eat in order to stay young forever. But for now, she's trapped in her impoverished village in southern China, practicing an illegal form of alchemy to keep food on the table, resurrecting the dead for a price. When Zalan finally has the chance to complete her imperial exams, she ventures to the capital to compete against the best alchemists in the country. In tasks, she'll be lucky to survive, let alone pass. On top of that, her reputation for raising the dead has followed her to the capital, and the crown prince himself seeks out her help, suspecting a coming assassination attempt. The more Zalan succeeds in her alchemy, the more she gets caught up in the dangerous political games of the royal family. There are monsters lurking within the palace walls, and it's only a matter of time before they and the secrets of Zalan's past catch up with her. She's making jewels for the rich to eat to stay immortal? That's, that's awesome. That sounds so great. I know that Kylie Lee Baker's writing is something that I really enjoy, and this whole synopsis sounds right up my alley. Definitely putting it on my radar. That one will be available on October 3rd. The next one is also available on October 3rd, and it is The Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzin. This is the start of a new fantasy romance series, and our main character is Taliesin, who has grown up an orphan in a nation under siege by the ruthless Knight Emperor. She's found her family among the soldiers who fight for freedom, but she's hiding a deadly secret. The light magic that courses through her veins, a blazing power believed to have been wiped out years ago that can cut through the Knight Emperor's shadows. Prince Alaric, the Emperor's only son and heir, has been forged into a weapon by his father, tasked with obliterating any threats to the Knight Emperor's rule with the strength of his armies and mighty shadow magic. Alaric has never been bested. That is until he sees Taliesin burning brightly on the battlefield with the magic that killed his grandfather, turned his father into a monster, and ignited the Hurricane Wars. In a clash of light and dark, their powers merge and create a force the likes of which has never been seen. Taliesin and Alaric both know that this war can only end with them, but a greater threat is coming and the strange new magic they can create together could be the only way to overcome it. Thrust into an uneasy alliance, they will confront the secrets at the heart of the war and find in each other a searing passion, one that could save their world or destroy it. Yes, give me that slow burn enemies to lovers. I'm just speculating here, but seems like that could be the case and I love how this sounds. This next one comes out in October 31st, Halloween, and it is What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. This one's pitched as the mummy meets death on the Nile, and it's a lush, immersive, historical fantasy set in Egypt filled with adventures, rivals to lovers, romance, and a dangerous race. Our main character is Inez, who is Bolivian-Argentinian, and she belongs to the glittering upper society of the 19th century Buenos Aires. And like the rest of the world, the town is steeped in old world magic that's been largely left behind or forgotten. Inez has everything a girl might want, except for one thing she yearns for most, her globetrotting parents who frequently are leaving her behind. When she receives word of their tragic deaths, Inez inherits their massive fortune and a mysterious guardian, and an archaeologist in partnership with his Egyptian brother-in-law. Yearning for answers, Inez sails to Cairo, bringing her sketch pads and the ancient golden ring her father sent to her for safekeeping before he died. Upon her arrival, the old world magic tethered to her ring pulls her down a path where she soon discovers there's more to her parents' disappearance than what her guardian led her to believe. With her guardian's infuriatingly handsome assistant thwarting her at every turn, Inez must rely on ancient magic to uncover the truth about her parents' disappearance or risk becoming a pawn in the larger game that will kill her. I'm excited for this one. It sounds really interesting. I haven't read a book with this setting before, and plus the fact that it's compared to The Mummy is kind of nostalgic and very exciting. And of course, that cover is beautiful. 
And let's move in to November because one, it's my birthday month, but two, because it's my birthday month, Iron Flame comes out by Rebecca Yaros, what we've all been waiting for. <laughs> it is the sequel to Fourth Wing and I just couldn't be more excited. <laughs> Iron Flame comes out on November 7th and obviously I'm not gonna read this synopsis to you because it is the sequel, but I'm telling you, Fourth Wing, it's so fun. <laughs> it was such an easy five out of five for me. Like I just like, I don't care if there's any negative reviews about it. <laughs> Man, I loved it a lot. It's basically a story about a war college that has different quadrants within it. We're following our main character, Violet Soringale, who is going into the Dragon Riders quadrant. She was supposed to be going into the Scribe quadrant, but her mother, who was kind of like the whole head honcho of the thing, is making an executive decision and not letting her be a scribe. She's like, any daughter of mine will be a Dragon Rider sort of thing. And it's just so fun. So many things on that book had me on the edge of my seat. The pacing was really good. The writing could have been a little bit better, sure. Like there are some cheesy lines, but who cares? <laughs> Truly love that book a lot. It will have a space in my top 10 of the year. Easy. And I cannot wait for book two on November 7th. <laughs> Love the cover of the next one. It is Do Your Worst by Rosie Dannon. This one comes out on November 14th and it says, sparks fly when an occult expert and a disgraced archeologist become enemies with benefits in this steamy romance. <laughs> Riley Rhodes finally has the chance to turn her family's knack for the supernatural into a legitimate business when she's hired to break the curse on an infamous Scottish castle. Hello, perfect, love this. Used to working alone in her alienating occupation, she's pleasantly surprised to meet a handsome stranger upon arrival until he tries to get her fired. Fresh off of a professional scandal, Clark Edgeware can't allow a self-proclaimed curse breaker to threaten his last chance of for redemption. After he fails to get Riley kicked off the survey site, he vows to avoid her. Unfortunately for him, she vows to get even. Riley expects the curse to do her dirty work by driving Clark away, but instead they keep finding themselves in close proximity, too close. Turns out the only thing they do better than fight is fool around. If they're not careful by the end of all this, more than the castle will end up in ruins. I love everything about this. I love everything about this. <laughs> it sounds super fun. I love that our two main characters are an occult expert and a disgraced archaeologist. Like I hope their banter is written really well because I feel like, especially from the cover, like the emotion and tension is like already there. I'm really stoked about it. Whew. Guys, the next one, let me tell you, is Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. It is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, and I am so sad, but so grateful that I have already read it. It will be out on November 7th, and I was lucky enough to get an arc for it. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> Bookshops and Bone Dust and Legends and Lattes, obviously, but like these will be comfort reads for me. I adore everything about them. Like I said, this one is a prequel to Legends and Lattes. You don't have to read either of them in order. It doesn't matter. But our main character is Viv, who is an orc running with the notorious mercenary crew, Rockham's Ravens. And it's not going as planned. She gets injured and has to take an extended break and heal her wound that she got during a battle at this little like sleepy beach town called Merc. She starts spending time with the bookshop owner as well as the head baker in the town, obviously makes friends, or fixing up the bookshop, like all of these things. It is so great. And there's a little like paranormal battle that goes on because before she got injured, the Rockham's Ravens were after a necromancer and it comes into play later. I truly loved everything about it. I can't wait to read it again. <laughs> the next one sounds pretty cute. It is Gwen and Art Are Not In Love by Lex Croucher. This is pitched as Heartstopper meets a knight's tale in a queer medieval rom-com. It says it's been hundreds of years since King Arthur's reign. His descendant, Arthur, a future lord in general gadabout, has been betrothed to Gwendolyn, a quick-witted, short-tempered princess of England since birth. The only thing they can agree on is that they despise each other. They're forced to spend the summer together at Camelot in the run-up to their nuptials, and within 24 hours, Gwen has discovered Arthur kissing a boy, and Arthur has gone digging for Gwen's childhood diary, and found confessions about her crush on the kingdom's only lady knight, Bridget. Realizing that they might make better allies than enemies, Gwen and Art make a reluctant pact to cover for each other, and as things heat up in the annual royal tournament, Gwen is swept off her feet by her knight and Arthur takes an interest in Gwen's royal brother. It is chock full of sword fighting, found family, and romantic shenanigans destined to make readers fall in love. Sounds like it has a lot of things that would be really fun. The setting, first and foremost, sound really interesting. The cover is absolutely adorable. And I wonder if it's going to be like a little bit of like fake dating or like fake marriage situation, like if they don't actually love each other and they're just covering for each other in their own queer relationships or something like that. I don't know, I don't care, it sounds great. <laughs> It'll be out on November 28th. And the next one is Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. This is her first young adult romance, apparently. I have yet to read any book by Allie Hazelwood. Please let me know if I should start prioritizing them. Like, should I? Should I read them? <laughs> I've heard really great things. This cover is really adorable. Our main character is Mallory and she is 
done with chess. Apparently the sport led to the destruction of her family four years earlier. So she's been forced to focus on her mom, sisters and dead end job that keeps the lights on. That is until she begrudgingly agrees to play in one last charity tournament and inadvertently wipes the board with notorious king killer, Nolan Sawyer, current world champion and reigning bad boy of chess. <laughs> I love it. Nolan's loss to an unknown rookie shocks everyone. What's even more confusing, his desire to cross pawns again. That's a cute little term. That was cute. What kind of gambit is Nolan playing? The smart move would be to walk away, resign, game over. But Mallory's victory opens the door to sorely needed cash prizes. And despite everything, she can't help feeling drawn to the enigmatic strategist. As she rockets up the ranks, Mallory struggles to keep her family safely separated from the game that wrecked it in the first place. And as her love for the sport she so desperately wanted to hate begins to rekindle, Mallory quickly realizes realizes that the game isn't only on the board, the spotlight is brighter than she imagined, and the competition can be fiercely attractive and intelligent and infuriating. <laughs> I think that sounds really, really cute. I really enjoy the fact that it is chess. By no means am I like really good at chess, but I do know how to play. So I think that having that little element would be really interesting to read about. The little mystery of like how chess ruined her family's life is definitely spiking my interest, of course, with the little YA romance going on. Like, I think it sounds great. Maybe this will be my first Ali Hazel a wood book, like legitimately. It'll be out on November 7th. The next one is another romance author that I have yet to read from, and it is Betting on You by Lynn Painter. This book comes out on November 28th, and it is about 17 year old Bailey. She starts a new job working at a hotel water park, and she is less than thrilled to see an old acquaintance as one of her co workers. Bailey met Charlie a year ago on the long flight to Omaha, where she moved after her parents' divorce. Charlie's cynicism did not mix well with Bailey's carefully well behaved temperament, and his endless commentary was the irritating cherry on top of the already emotionally fraught trip. Now, Bailey and Charlie are still polar opposites, but instead of everything about him rubbing Bailey the wrong way, she starts to look forward to hanging out and gossiping about the water park guests and their co-workers, particularly two who keep flirting with each other. Bailey and Charlie make a bet on whether or not the cozy pair will actually get together. Charlie insists that members of the opposite sex just can't be friends, and Bailey is determined to prove him wrong. Bailey and Charlie keep close track of the romantic progress of others while Charlie works to deflect the growing feelings he's developed for Bailey. Soon, what Charlie was hoping to avoid becomes a reality as Bailey starts to see him as not only a friend she can rely on in the midst of family drama, but someone who makes her hands shake and heart race. But Charlie has a secret, a secret that involves Bailey and another bet Charlie may have made. Can the two make a real go of things or has Charlie's secret doomed them before they could start? Seems like a little messy YA romance with a lot of things going on within these two characters' separate lives and then them coming together for this story is bound to have some drama. And I think it sounds really interesting. The next one that is put on my radar is The Dark Darkness Before Them by Matthew Ward. Really into the simple cover. I think it's really beautiful. This world has a dangerous immortal king where souls fuel magic and a supernatural mist known as the Veil is threatening to engulf the land. These are dark times for the kingdom of Kalad. As the magical mists of the Veil devour the land, the populace struggles. Kat, our main character, doesn't care about any of that. She's a talented thief who's pursuing one of the biggest scores that will settle the debt that destroyed her family. No easy feat in a realm where indentured spirits hold vigil over every vault and treasure room. However, Kat has a unique power and she can speak to those spirits and even command them. She has no qualms using her power to her advantage. She's not a hero. She just wants to be free to have her old life back. But as a rebellion rekindles and the war for Kalad's future begins, everyone, Kat included, will have to pick a side. This is called the Soulfire Saga and this is book one of this new adult epic fantasy. Whenever a story has a main character that's a thief, I'm like way more inclined to pick it up. I just love a morally gray character. That one comes out on November 7th. Okay, and I cannot even believe that I almost didn't put this one on the list. I didn't even know that it was coming out right now, but it's Defiant by Brandon Sanderson. It is the conclusion to the Skyward series. And I am so excited about this one. I can't read the synopsis because I've only read the first two, but there are four books total in this series. Didn't really love the second one too much, but that first book, Skyward, I freaking loved it. It was hilarious. It was a found family sci-fi romp of a story. And it was so exciting, loved everything about it. And I recently watched an interview with Brandon Sanderson saying that this fourth book, book should have, he said, a lot of elements without spoilers and characters that were in that first book. And I missed a lot of them in that second book, if that's making sense. So I'm very inclined to continue the series so that I can read this fourth book because it sounds from that interview, like it would be worth it. Like it would be worth catching up to read this finale. So that comes out on November 21st. And I think that that is all that I have for you today. That was quite a bit. So thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. I hope you are also enjoying a pumpkin spice latte.
okay and looking forward to these fall reads. If you are still watching and you don't know what to say, leave me a pumpkin emoji down below in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye.